This video is going to be about cyclic electron flow. So in the last video, we talked about linear electron flow, which is what we have drawn on the board here. That way we can kind of see how it compares to cyclic electron flow. So cyclic electron flow is unique in that it only uses photosystem one. So that means we're not going to be producing any oxygen because we're not going to be needing to split water to resupply the chlorophyll in photosystem two. So what's going to happen with um, cyclic electron flow is you're still going to have a photon of light that comes in and excites electrons and chlorophyll molecules, and that excitement gets passed on to the chlorophyll molecules in the reaction center complex. The electron gets excited and picked up by the primary electron acceptor, and so now it'll be passed still to ferredoxin, but from ferredoxin, instead of going to NAD plus reductase, it's going to go to the cytochrome complex. So that means we're not going to produce um, any NADPH, so we're not going to be sending anything to the Calvin cycle. So from the cytochrome complex, it will then still go to the plastocyanin, and then it will go back to the uh, P700 molecules in the reaction center complex. So we can kind of see why it would be called cyclic electron flow, because it's forming this repetitive cycle. And so even though it's not able to send anything to the Calvin cycle, it's not releasing oxygen from splitting water, they're still able to produce ATP by um, using this electron transport chain. So even though they can't do um, everything, they're still able to do something useful for themselves by using this alternative pathway. So. Um, cyclic electron flow is found in um, some plant species and some photosynthetic species. It's not 100% um, sure what the purpose of it was, but they have um, seen that plants that don't have this cyclic electron flow grow really poorly in um, very high intensity light situations. So maybe this was um, some sort of photoprotective mechanism at one point and then uh, the fact that it's still in plants today is more of an um, evolutionary remnant than something that is used very often. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts and information presented in these videos will be true regardless of what biology course you're taking. However, the material we covered in this video is specifically referencing material covered in Campbell Biology's 11th edition. Remember that if you are an enrolled Baylor student, we do offer free tutoring on the first floor of the Sid Richardson building, and you can schedule a free 30-minute appointment to have one-on-one -on -one tutoring online, or you can stop by during any of our business hours. For more information about the services we provide, you can go to our website at www.baylor.edu tutoring. Thank you.